tell us about smart radiation therapy. I will start with uh, what's radiotherapy for prostate cancer. It's sure. one of four um, scientifically validated and uh, internationally uh, approved uh, approaches to localized prostate cancer. The other three approaches are surgery, androgen deprivation, and uh, active monitoring. Mm. So radiotherapy is a kind of alternative to surgery. It's a virtual surgery, as some people say since it's a far less invasive approach. Um, formally, we don't have any randomized data yet comparing these two main local approaches, radiotherapy and prostatectomy, um, but there are some large ongoing studies. Uh, while uh, waiting for the results of these studies, there is, I must say, very stimulating competition mm. between surgeons and us. So, in ourselves. So, I think that it's uh, in this way we, uh, in the recent uh, years, we um, witnessed really a revolution, not evolution, but revolution in treatment techniques. The surgeons, they developed, you know, nerve sparing uh, approach, uh, laparoscopic approach, uh, robotic uh, approach, we, and the same uh, phenomenon for radiotherapy. So, we we have uh, now much less invasive uh, radiotherapy, high precision radiotherapy. We have the way to, to see what we treat and to treat what we see. Uh, I just mentioned that um, uh, historically radiotherapy was given just uh, based on the external, external uh, signs, external uh, reference point for where is, the pro where is prostate uh, in the human body. And today we base our treatment on the uh, image-guided uh, approach. So before each session or even during the session, you can see the target. And obviously, how, how do you, it, see the target? you can see it with the various, uh, with variety of methods like uh, ultrasound-based mm -hmm. image-guided um, approach, uh, um, KV, KV, which is uh, um, X-ray uh, positioning, or uh, even um, CT scan, so it's con beam uh, CT scan performed just before the treatment. And there are some new approaches with uh, machines with already um, um, inbuilt magnetic resonance on the Linux. So we have this variety of Linux uh, that allow uh, really for the high precision radiotherapy. So in this way, we can improve the results. And there are also some other approaches that you can increase the results, like androgen deprivation. We have more and more data on how to combine these two modalities, and also for new uh, fractionation scheduling and so on. So there are really plenty of new technologies, of new um, approaches to improve the results in this uh, it's a, it's a, This is very interesting, this... Um um, radio surgery, other people have been talking about at this meeting here. Yeah. And um, uh, John Yarnold was talking about uh, the explosion of high pore fractionation uh, uh, clinical trials in breast. Same thing happening in prostate? The same happened in the prostate. Uh, mm -hmm. This is due to uh, biological data we have. We have more and more data showing that prostate cancer is uh, very sensitive to fraction size. Mm -hmm which means that if you increase the, si the fraction size from the traditional two gray per fraction, and in this way you should gi you give uh, eight weeks uh, treatment, you increase the fraction dose to uh, three, four, five, even eight gray per fraction, uh, you have a much higher tumor effect. And so no a normal tissue is protected because of you the You have the method, method, you have technology to yeah. protect normal tissue. This is the... Yeah. Uh, clue yeah. of the this new protocols. Yeah, sure, sure. And and the, I mean, John Yana was saying eighteen. Even rays, yeah, even yeah. is this is this unthinkable in prostate? I mean, it's uh, radio surgery. So yeah. I like this uh, word because it's just uh, surgery given with radiation, yeah. and surgery is given with one. Uh, they open the patient once only, yeah. and we I think that we would like to arrive to this point also for the prostate. At the moment, we have some schedules of, of five fractions, so it's just a weak treatment. It still has to be uh, validated and uh, investigated, as uh, obviously it's not, a, uh, let's say, it's not randomized data yet, but there are ongoing trials. And probably we'll st move far from one week, maybe to one day only. Mm -hmm. 
I, I see all these um, uh, knives, yeah. um, the radio surgery knives in the exhibition hall. There are gamma knives and cyber knives and uh, radio arcs and so on. Um, are they all the same? They are not the same. They're not the same. The technology is very different. Um, what is uh, great, some of them, like CyberKnife, it's a robotic approach. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, you have really sub-millimetric millimetric, uh, preci precision. Um, you don't need to uh, rely only on, on uh, te technologies, on uh, radiation uh, therapies. You rely on computer system and it's all quality assurance uh, from the first uh, simulation to the right. to the end. So it's all uh, control, to computer controlled. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you this question as a, as a, as a potential patient, 65 plus. Um, at the moment where the surgeons are offering me this and you're offering me that, how do I as a patient uh, make up my mind? You have to make a decision. It's always the patient that mm. chooses. Uh, when we discuss the treatment, obviously we, we, we have to uh, explain which are the differences. Mm. The um, efficacy of both treatments, surgery and radiotherapy, they seem to be very, very similar. Good. Uh, so the difference uh, is the toxicity profile, and it, this is the, the, the choice that the patient has to, to do. The surgery um, has some, since it's more invasive approach, uh, has higher risk of uh, urinary incontinence or uh, sexual dysfunction while radiotherapy ha has higher ri risks of um, rectal bleeding or urinary um, dysfunction like uh, higher frequency. Mm -hmm. But with the new technologies, we, really, uh, we are really able to uh, reduce to less than 1% of the severe uh, late toxicity. So this is discussed every time with the patient and the patient makes a, this, uh, takes a, uh, makes a choice. And then the last thing is uh, this notion of, of both surgery and, 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 uh, and uh, radiation therapy in the higher risk prostate cancer patients. This is now evidence based. This we have for this uh, uh, scenario we have uh, randomized uh, data. Mm -hmm. uh, just last year uh, we've got uh, the third randomized trial showing um, a real benefit when you combine. Uh, surgery and radiotherapy in high-risk patients. The patients, T3 patients, so it's extracapsular disease or positive margin patients, they have up to 50% of them will have recurrent disease if treated only with surgery. And it has been uh, proved that um, a radiotherapy given up to three, four months after surgery uh, improves uh, not only biochemical uh, control, not only local uh, control, but also overall survival. In one of these trials, it was almost two years difference. That's and it's welcome. a huge difference. It's a huge difference. And the first time we see such a huge difference in prostate cancer, you can just uh, uh, compare it with uh, other, let's say, uh, um, benefits which were observed these years, like uh, with the uh, chemotherapy with the uh, docetaxel it's something like two months sure. benefit or even a uh, vaccine mm. April this year, a new vaccine for prostate cancer, but it's uh, four months benefit. Yeah. So with radiotherapy, we add almost two years. So it's a huge, huge benefit. Barbara, that was terrific. Thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it.